God's pet peeves. Romans 1.21 tells us, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 3.2, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. What are some of your pet peeves? Things that bother you. For some, it could be those that chew with their mouth open. Just the sound of the smacking of the food irritates them to their core. For others, it is those that snore. Perhaps you are a light sleeper like I am, and when you hear someone snore, it just bothers you. By the way, my wife does not snore. Perhaps it could be someone on their cell phone all the time. For whatever reason, some people feel the need to be glued to their cell phone 24-7 before they go to church, during church, after church, on their way to work, while they're having dinner, before they go to bed, and perhaps the thought or the sight of those on their cell phone all the time irritates you. Perhaps it's those that are immature, always joking about something, never serious. Maybe it's a double parker. I am one of those people that get irritated with double parking people. For example, in front of our homes, we have a curb that can fit four different cars. Now my philosophy of good parking is fitting four cars in those spots. However, double parkers ruin it for everybody. They minimize those four spots and turn it into parking for only three spots because of their inconsiderate parking. Perhaps it's a crazy driver, those that have no consideration for anybody else on the road. They're driving 10, 20 miles above the speed limit and to make matters worse, they look at you like you are the one with the problem for driving according to the law. One thing that God hates is ingratitude. It is interesting that Paul lists ingratitude as one of the early signs of our depravity or moral corruption which was stated in Romans 121, and one of the telltale signs of the last days in Timothy 3.2. My challenge for us this morning is that we as God's people avoid being identified as ungrateful at all costs. I'd like to share two clear reasons why we should be thankful people. Number one, because it is clear in scripture that God wants a thankful people. For example, all of us during Christmas time perhaps have a wish list. For some, they want the latest iPhone. For others, they want a brand new car or an exercise equipment. However, on God's wish list, do you know what he wants? Just the thankful people. He wants those that show gratitude for all that he has done for them. Ephesians 5.20 tells us, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, the Bible tells us, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Psalms 107.1 tells us, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. When we are thankful, we are showing that we acknowledge the goodness of God and the goodness of others in our lives. In essence, we are giving God and others credit for everything that is good that has happened to us. I have a question for you this morning. How much gratitude have you shown toward others for the things that they've done for you? Do others sense your appreciation for the things they bless you with? And then next, does God see your gratitude. This morning when you woke up, did God see your gratitude? This morning, based on the amount of time that you prayed, did God see your gratitude? Based on the amount of time we spent in our Bibles, did God see our gratitude? Remember, it's much easier to continue blessing a thankful people than an unthankful people. Number two, why we should be a thankful people. Number two, ingratitude is a direct disobedience to God's command to be grateful. Ingratitude is a direct disobedience to God's command to being grateful. There are many reasons why people fall into this pitfall of ingratitude. First of all, they haven't been taught. And by the way, I'm finding that this is more true than any of the other points that I'll list. For whatever reason, parents are not taking the time to teach their children to be thankful. They're giving them things without expecting gratitude in return. And by the way, it's a good pattern to teach our children to be thankful. As a result, because children aren't being taught to be thankful, other people that come along their way, their teachers, their leaders, their pastors, their friends that do things for them, they are not being very grateful 
for the things that they receive. Number next, they haven't thought about the blessings they have received. So first of all, they haven't been taught. Secondly, they haven't thought about it. Many have said, we do not think because we do not think. So sad to think that our lives are, are missing gratitude because of the simple fact we're not thinking about all the things that God has done for us. I have a question for you. If I were to ask you to write down 20 things that God bless you with today, would that be hard for you to do? And by the way, for many of us, just at first thought, we would think that would be impossible. But when we think about the shelter that we had, when we think about the food that we've had, when we think about the drinks, the, the clothing, when we think about the comforts and our family and the fact that we get to be a brother or a sister or a dad or a mom or a husband or a wife, or as a Christian, the salvation that we get to have for me, the privilege of working in ministry and the list can go on and on and on. We have so much to be thankful for, but we must think about the blessings that God has brought our way. Next, another reason why we fall into the pitfall of ingratitude is because we don't realize what things we have are things that many do not. First and foremost, our religious freedom. Now I understand the time that we're living in right now, our church is being under attack, but in all fairness, in comparison to what others are dealing with all around the world, I'm thankful that we still get to meet as a church, even if it's under the tent. I'm thankful that I get to make this religious recording for you to, to and be inspired and be encouraged by even as we speak. I'm thankful for the religious freedom that we still have in our country. And by the way, the religious freedom that we must continue to fight for. And then next, the blessings of America. Again, the chaos that we've experienced, especially these last couple of months, they have been unsettling and even unpredictable. But I dare say that the blessings that I get to receive here in America are far greater than many get to experience on a daily basis. And then next, daily provisions. As I mentioned before, the, 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 the countless uh, blessings that we have and provisions that come our way, many of us, we get to go to our refrigerators any time of the day, any hour of the day, and we have food there and we have drink there. Now there may not be lobster there like we would want. There may not be steak there like we would want, but there's plenty of food to fill our bellies and to care for our needs. And then salvation. Let's never forget about our salvation. It seems that we get so used to our salvation. That's why the Bible tells us, neglect not so great a salvation. Let's remember to thank God for the salvation that we have. It seems that many Christians are busy occupying themselves with looking up to unsaved people and the, the wealth that they have and the possessions that they have, when in reality, our salvation is far greater in value than anything that they have combined. Let's never forget the goodness of the salvation that God has given to us. My encouragement this morning is that we take some time to send a quick text, write a quick note, make a much needed phone call to express gratitude toward another that is long overdue. You'll be happier this way. And do you want the will of God for your life? Here it is. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Have a great day.